Hello and welcome to another episode of Pat Bear's Anime Club, an ongoing video series where I take a look at something from the world of anime, or manga, or visual novels, or light novels, or whatever. Sometimes we talk about South Korean comic books. It is what it is, and tonight, what it is is, live on Twitch, I'm talking about the summer season that's almost over, and the fall season that is about to begin. If you are watching this on YouTube, you may notice the, when you see the numbers, you're like, wait, no, that show's over. But Pat's saying there's more episodes. That's because I recorded this in the past. And there are more episodes to talk about uh, and more shows to talk about. Or if you hear me say a phrase like, I don't know if Crunchyroll has this or if High Dive has this or if it's going to be on Hulu. And you say, well, no, Pat, I'm watching it on a Crunchyroll. At the time of this recording, I did not know that. There you go. We're going to start by talking about the summer anime, as you can see. Because you can see right here that I have, uh, am I the strongest question mark? It's an isekai that I'm not watching because I really didn't like the manga. I gave up on the manga pretty early on. Now, why? You're saying yourself, so, Pat. This is just a guy who gets reincarnated as a baby and he has really cool powers and a loving uh, younger sister and a weird nanny and he like dresses like he somewhere saw a cross between a Power Ranger and like Lelouch in Code Geass. Uh, what's not to like? And that's basically it. It's kind of a comedy, but not really. And the part where most of the most of the action that takes place, most of the defining uh, momentum of the series is. Well, my younger sister wants to watch this because she found out what anime is. And so she's watching me on a closed circuit television do cool stuff. And that's not a motivation because otherwise this main character would not be doing anything. Um, it's just not very good. So I did not watch the anime adaptation of this because I did not enjoy the manga. Maybe it's a hidden gem and I fucked up. But I don't think I did. Um, I did not read, or I'm sorry, I did not watch this. This is based on a video game, Altair, Ryza, Ever Darkness, and the Secret Hideout, the animation. When an anime has the title, the animation, I'm always a little like, what kind of video game are you based on? I have heard no one talk about this. I did not see it. Uh, Aristophanes has good game. I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. But yeah, I don't, I don't know about this one. I don't, uh, I should say, any chart. I don't go by their percentages because sometimes people don't like things that I think are great, and sometimes people hate things, and I'm just like, oh yeah, I agree. And sometimes, um, I love something, and they're just like, boo, and it's like, yeah, get out of here. Um, so yeah, I have nothing to say about that other than I heard nothing about it. Uh, Ayaka, um. This looked generic as fuck. And the clips I have seen of this made it seem generic as fuck. Uh, it just was like one of those things where it's like, oh, there's going to be a bunch of mysteries and martial arts and the animation is going to blend CGI and digital. And I think I'm not going to watch it. And I, I was, I, I don't know. I don't know if I was right, but I didn't. Uh, at, some point, at some point, we'll get to an anime I actually watched. It won't be Bang Dream. It's my go. Uh, I am not a big idol watcher. Uh, I, I appreciate idols as a group, as a concept. But it, generally, if I'm going to watch something that is uh, an idol show, it is got, it's got a modifier on it. Like, it's an idol show, but also a murder mystery. Or, it's an idol show, but all the idols are zombies. Something like that. And this just seems straightforward. This is just like a bunch of girl bands. Or it's an anime about a girl band, but the main character uh, in it has an anxiety disorder. Like, okay, maybe that will be great. Um, yeah. Look, I hope, I, I'll say this. I hope that Anon did persuade Tomari, uh, uh, Tomari to, uh, to experience the true power of friendship and music. Like, I don't know anything about these characters, but I hope they did experience the true power of friendship and music. Because that's nice. I didn't watch this anime. Bleach, Thousand Year War, The Separation. 
part two of the thousand year blood war uh arc for this uh hey broken record i didn't watch this i have seen part one which i watched way later and thought was great i don't have hulu right now i will get hulu and i will watch this because there is something next season that also is going to be on hulu so at some point i'll get hulu for like a month and i'll watch all part two of of uh bleach thousand year blood war and i'll watch the other thing and we'll get to it when we get to it and i'll, I'll say what it is then uh, so I am going to watch this. This is on my going to watch list because at the very least, I used to be a big Bleach fan. And Studio Perot is sinking a ton of fucking money into this adaptation. And I appreciate that because it looks fucking gorgeous. I thought part one was good. Also, with enough time, the anime is trying to make sense of what was a rushed and not particularly excellent arc of the manga. And that, so they're doing a good job with it. Bungo Stray Dogs 5, didn't watch. Uh, I gave up on Bungo Stray Dogs in like the second season. Uh, a very good friend of mine, this is her favorite anime. And she says this season has been very good. Uh, there, there have been, a, a, I guess the 11th episode is airing soon at the time of this recording. Uh, but she was very happy with it. Um... I have not watched any of the car fight, card fight Vanguard will dress season three. Uh, Urs fan says, my kid loves Bungo. Hell yeah. Um, I have not watched any of seasons of this. I have not watched any card fight. Uh, Classroom for Heroes. This seemed incredibly boilerplate. And Actus is not a studio that I enjoy. Oh boy, can we fucking get to an anime I've watched? Dark Gathering. Still no. Uh, Dark Gathering is a... Dark Gathering is an anime based on the Manwa, South Korean comic uh, adaptation of Ketaro. Um, Ketaro. Uh, so it's, it's a anime adaptation of a comic korean comic adaptation of a classic anime that got a remake a couple years ago uh pat only watches the anime in the latter half of the alphabet apparently uh when are we getting to helk i i think i know that when we get to h i've watched an anime in h but i have not watched anything in a through d so far um but yeah so this is this is uh, a different interpretation of uh, uh, of the uh, Keitaro story, which I don't particularly care about because I'm not a big horror person. But I do appreciate how convoluted that is. Uh, hell, here we go. Here's an anime I watched. I didn't know this was a two core. I had no idea that we were getting 24 episodes of this uh, and, it, and it is stacked like this. Uh, I was unaware that this is a, a, a double. Um, now I know why it's been so slow. Helk. The first couple episodes of Helk are totally worth watching. This show would pass the three episode test. Where you give the show three episodes, decide if you want to watch more. The problem is... it's As the story has gone on, I've liked it less and less. The concept is the demon lord has been defeated and there must be a new demon lord so that a bunch of the strongest demons who are not part of the four generals for some reason the four generals are running if they didn't take part anyway any other demon that's not the four generals can become the new demon lord in this competition and then helk shows up and helk is a human and a hero and helk's brother defeated the demon lord and then eventually you hear Helk has been banished by the humans and is wanted by the humans and maybe killed his brother. But but he's just like a fun guy. And there's a lot of goofy shit in this tournament of him like they're, they're trying to stack the deck against him because they don't want a human to be the next demon lord. Even though he says, I hate other humans, I can't wait to conquer them with all of you. And the demons are just like, I don't know, this Helk guy seems pretty cool. Uh, I think I'm on Team Elk. 
Um, and then, like, Vermilio, who was in charge of the tournament, gets stuck with Helk, and they have to, like, get back, and there's, like, humans are doing some shit that isn't cool, and there's, like, a lot of fucking sadness. Now, there are some fun characters. There's some, like, bird people and, like, some real goofiness, and most recently I watched an episode that had a cooking competition in it. So, it, like, it has that humor, but, like, the comedy just went away as the story continued, and I'm not interested in that. I liked the humor part. So I am going to keep watching this. I might not be watching this weekly anymore. This might go into my, I'll, ca I'll get caught up every few weeks. Uh, but I, I do want to finish it. I think the animation is really nice. I think the uh, art style works really well in this scenario. And I, I like the characters. I just, I wanted it to kind of be a bit more breezy. And it got a little real. Uh, oh, we're almost done with this, and it's a shame. Horror Mia, The Missing Pieces. First and foremost, maybe you didn't watch Funimation stuff. Maybe you were only a Crunchyroll person, so you didn't watch this when it first came out. Watch Horror Mia. Just watch Horror Mia. You don't need to watch The Missing Pieces if you didn't love Horror Mia. But if you finished Toromiya and you were like, I just want more from these characters. I just wish I could see more stuff from these characters. Then you can watch The Missing Pieces. Because The Missing Pieces is not season two. The Missing Pieces is whatever we cut out of the manga. Oh God, this anime was a huge success. Oh no, we shouldn't have cut stuff out of the manga to make just one season of an anime. Oh, we fucked up. Because there's no more uh, source material for the anime. So they just did an anime season of the shit they didn't show you from the manga. And it, it so you you will be lost because there is no real cohesive to the, to the episodes. Some episodes are just like bits and pieces. Sometimes they try to string them together to make it a coherent episode. Sometimes it's just like scenes from the world. It's just like snippets. So like It's almost like memories of it. Um, and it, and some of it is like side stories from the anime, like that didn't appear in the weekly or the monthly, but appeared in like the, uh, the, the volumes, the, the, uh, graphic novel editions. Um, and it's just more lovely. It's just more lovely shit. Uh, I have a friend who is in the dub. And so I watched a little bit of the dub and the dub is also very good. Uh, they they feel like real young people, um, and so that's got a good quality to it. Uh, Horror Mia that if that is on your uh, that should be if you haven't seen it, the original Horror Mia should be on your much watch list to go back to, and then if you loved it, loved loved it, watch this. If you liked it, you might not need this. Um, okay, so. Jujutsu Kaisen started late. It is a in the season. It is a two core. Uh, Mappa is doing it. Here's the thing. Some people absolutely love this uh, the the arc this arc in the manga. Other people didn't love this arc of the manga. I am one of those other people. So I am watching this adaptation. I am excited. For more Jujutsu Kaisen, because I think the first season, uh, the two core of the first season, is so fucking good. I think Zero, the movie, is an exceptional. Zero is the only is the one of the only examples of a prequel that you can watch without watching the source materials, because it's it's only a prequel in that uh, the mangaka made it first and then sold the idea and did the rest of it. So even though it is a prequel, it was actually written first. Um, so it's like a prelude more than a prequel. Uh, but yeah, I have such such love for this series. I think it is so excellent. And uh, the MAPPA do, is doing such a wonderful job with it. I think this adaptation is unbelievably good. I mean, there's a panda named Panda in it. And I don't know what else to tell you besides that. It is sad. It is uh, uh, gory. And I don't love the where the manga goes. And so, like, I don't think they're going to change. They're not going to pull a U-turn. Um, 
Strahd NPC. Uh, so we are. Oh God. Um, God, hold on. Uh, the actual name of it is escaping me because this is season two. Uh, so like, I, I, let me just look up the actual name of it. Um, uh, I'm just gonna just give me a second here. Uh, yeah. Okay. There we go. I'll look in this up name so I can look up the actual name of it. Um. Uh, so, uh, Shibuya, it's Shibuya, that's right. So we're, we're in the Shibuya arc, and I don't know why I couldn't remember that we were in the Shibuya arc, but that's where we are, because uh, I was like, it's a real name of a place, and I don't remember why I can't remember the name of it. So yeah, the Shibuya arc. Um, it's not my favorite, but some people really love it. Uh, whoops. Yeah, it is, uh, it's, you know, we're getting some good shit. Um, cause we've got, we've got like the past and then we get into it. Uh, level one demon Lord and one room hero. I did not watch this. The premise didn't do anything for me. The first couple chapters of the manga I thought were okay. I do love the idea of, I need my revenge, but you are pathetic. That is a fun, like, step into it. That's like a fun, like, dip. I, there's something to that premise that I think is fun. I just think the execution of this is not good. Liar, liar. I did not watch any of. I am not interested in, um, like, this is not a death game anime. But it it's all of the parts of a death game anime, except that the, the, uh, the dying at the end, right? is a psychological uh uh like like figure out the pieces like be a shitty liar be a great liar and do it for me um i did not watch uh monogatari core two of moment spirits uh, monogatari i have not watched the first one so i did not watch the follow-up um yeah i'm not watching speaking of the like Oh, yeah, this is the anime, one of those animes where it's like, oh, it's the psychological. There's not really a lot to psychological for uh, uh, this series, but I didn't watch the first one, and so I didn't watch the follow-up. It is a romantic comedy series because it is supposed to be a revenge thriller. That is a fun idea. The I, in, in a vacuum. That is a fun idea. This guy was bullied and picked on. And now he's back and he's thin and he's handsome and he is suave and he is going to use his that to like eventually humiliate the person that humiliated him. Except he's not suave. He's still a fucking goof. And she's great. And people can change. If he changed, why can't other people change? And other people like him but maybe they don't like him for being handsome. They like him for who he really is, but who he really is, I don't think is that compelling or interesting. So like, there's something about it, but the execution of it is not something I'm interested in. Jobless Reincarnation Season 2. Mashoko Tensei. Um, okay, so this is ending soon. Oh God, we've talked about Jobless Reincarnation a lot. I can't recommend this anime to you because I think you would have to watch the first season part, you know, core one and core two of the first season. This is an incredibly important anime in that the source material, the light novels for jobless reincarnation are the beginning of the modern isekai, the isekai as we know it, the, uh, I've talked about classic isekai, modern isekai, or traditional isekai, I should say, modern isekai, and postmodern isekai. This is modern isekai. This and, even though it's a death game anime and not an isekai, uh, uh, this is a, an isekai. Uh, this along with Sword Art Online, which is, again, not an isekai, but a death game anime, um, that eventually kind of becomes an isekai, but really is still just a death game anime. Those two modernized isekai into what we know, which is overpowered main character, lots of ladies, um, 
but it didn't have the things that we, it didn't, we learned a lot of lessons from it. Like, if your main character is a scumbag, people aren't always interested in watching or reading your thing. Like, Rudius grows up and becomes a better version of himself as a, as a young man. But he's also an older man because he died and was reincarnated as a child. So he does eventually, due to circumstances, become less of a lecherous, perverted, weirdo, creep. He eventually becomes better. But he's not, and it's not pleasant. Um, it's gorgeous looking. The animation, oh, Studio Bind does such a lovely job with this. The magic looks so fantastic. The power uh, makes sense. The, the way that people learn is, is great. It's sad. It's touching. Um, it's shocking in moments and dramatic. And it's such a great anime, I would never tell anyone to watch it. Because Rudius su Rudy sucks so much. Like, I remember a friend of mine, this is years ago, you, you, at this point was like, Hey, you gotta watch ReZero. Just know that Subaru, there's depth to Subaru. Like, he sucks. But there's a there's there's like a lot behind it, and you'll grow to love him. And this is even more than that. This is even bigger than that. Because Subaru is at least funny when he sucks, but like, and ReZero becomes certainly worth watching, especially with the supporting characters and when they're given a chance uh, to grow. And this show kind of has that, but mostly it's just like eventually you just kind of get used to to Rudius like being awful i stopped i was like covering this weekly and i stopped because i had to keep writing summaries of rudius being awful and being like well i don't know what else to tell you uh Regisle says i can't say i ever grew to like subaru totally fair um i have come to like him because uh he had some character monologues recently uh well this last season he's really working hard and i appreciate that but towards the end of the last season where you start to understand that character traits of his are not just like shallow, that there is a depth and a reason to them. I think Subaru, I, I, I've come around on Subaru uh, as that series progressed. Uh, but I can understand why you have it. Um, but Rudius, I still think sucks. So it's tough. Uh, My Happy Marriage. I did not watch this series. Um, I have heard good things about it. Uh, but I just haven't. I I want to say I just wasn't interested in romance this season. Next season, there's some romance anime that I'm going to check it out. I'm excited about it. This season, I was a little romanced out because there was a lot of good romance in 2023, and I just wasn't interested in watching this one, which is also why I didn't watch My Tiny Senpai. Also, I'm kind of done with it. I think I'm, I I'm kind of done with workplace comedy ro workplace romantic comedy where one character is way taller than the other because i just there's nothing to this there's nothing to this guy there's nothing to this girl do i love that this is sourced from Do dojin that this is a dojinshi this is a circle group made their own comic their own like fan comic thing uh, their own original idea and it became an anime of course i do do i want to watch my tiny senpai not really um yeah i just didn't want to watch it my unique skill makes me op even at level one i have been watching this uh on my own i have not been covering this weekly yeah my tiny my tiny my tiny senpai is exactly what you think it is yeah that doesn't surprise me you know um, I may watch it someday. I may get bored and just watch it, but I kind of gave up on it almost immediately. Um, so, uh, my unique skill makes me OP even at level one is a totally okay adaptation of a totally okay manga. 
This is the kind of manga where if I skip a chapter, I go, wait, what's going on? Oh, I guess I skipped a couple months of this. Oh, I skipped a bunch of this. Oh, okay, I guess I'll go back. Like, it's totally fine. The premise, I think, is kind of okay, where he's like, he sucks, but he has a good drop rate. And do I like a, a fun young lady with a big hammer? Of course I do. Uh, do I like a bunny that loves carrots so much so, so that she calls the main character Carrot as a sign of affection? I kind of like that. There are some characters in this that I think are fun. It is a low-level, decent harem. There are no slaves. There is... He does not seem to be aware of anyone's affection for him. Not everyone is romantically interested in him. Uh, there's no, like, secret to it that I, I think that makes him really OP. I haven't finished it, uh, but I don't remember that from the manga. It's just fine. It is a totally fine, totally okay, serviceable thing that you definitely can skip. There's so much this guy out this season, it's okay to miss this one. I would say you shouldn't miss Reborn as a Vending Machine. I now wander the dungeon. At the time of this recording, I am excited about the last episode because there, this this previous one had got a little sad. And I'm like, okay, let's fucking wrap this show up. Um, the premise is bonkers. Remember when I was talking about Isekai and I said there was traditional or uh, old school and then there is modern and then there is postmodern? This is a postmodern guy. You lump this in with, uh, uh, so I'm a spider, so what? Uh, I re reincarnated as a slime. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, the, the one about an onsen, the sword anime. The guy reincarnated as a sword. It's that kind of thing. Our main character loves vending machines. He died in a vending machine accident. He is now a vending machine in a fantasy world. Uh, and immediately... He is met by a girl that is strong enough to pick him up, which is great. And eventually he meets a character that is smart enough to understand that he has a soul. Uh, he can power up. He can get a shield. He can become other vending machines. He solves the Mentos Diet Coke trick solved a problem. He is active in ways that I was not expecting Boxo. Also, he got named Boxo, which is great. Um... It's just stupid in a great way. This is one that I'm like, you should watch this. You should watch the first episode, see if you're on board with the silliness of it. Um, there have been a couple episodes I didn't love. You, you can't see it in this photo, but very tiny in the background. There are like these like demon cub things that are really annoying. And they had a whole episode where they treated Box so poorly because they didn't have the imagination to accept the possibility that boxo might be intelligent and i hate that um but yeah i really like this show it's so weird it's it's way better than 62 percent get out of here it's on crunchy roll you should watch it uh stupid in a great way is the perfect pitch for me yeah i mean like like i'm not trying to say this is brilliant it's a goofy premise but they keep paying it off it's really fun. Uh, Reign of the Seven Spellblades uh, did not seem appealing to me at all. I did not watch this. I watched a couple clips of it. Uh, I think it's like a main character. It's either that the main character is hiding who he is, but we know it, or everyone's hiding something. But it's just like, yeah, go to magic school with swords and... It's deadly, and that's okay. And I think there's also, like, immediately a thing about, like, why do we enslave monsters? Why do we think that's okay? And I don't know if that gets resolved. But, I, yeah, no, I, I, I didn't watch Rain. Rent-A-Girlfriend Season 3. I'm a 43-year-old man. And I have watched my share of harem anime over the years. I don't watch harem anime anymore unless they are goofy isekai harem anime. But if it's just like, if you could say, hey, remember Love Hina? 
I'm out. I'm just out now. So there's another show we'll talk about. I'm out of that. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in Rent a Girlfriend. Um, uh, I just... The line, uh, a new girlfriend enters the mix. I'm just like, no, I'm just not. I'm happy that there are people that like this show. And I'm happy they got three seasons because there are so many shows that I love that only get one season that like never get to continue. So the fact that they've got three seasons is how many years? That sounds great. Uh, listen, at this point, you know if you like Grand a Girlfriend or not. Exactly. I'm not, I, I don't think you should go back and try that, but maybe you would like it. I don't know. I just need my guy to suck less, right? Like the main character in this show needs to, that's the thing with any romance show or why I didn't like, there's a show about like a fox spirit that uh, moves in with a guy that is just like working his job and doesn't, isn't respected. I forget the name of it. And that show pissed me off because that dude is just a dude who does his job. Like there was no point where I was like, yeah, he deserves better. It's like, I guess he deserves better, but he kind of sucks. Um, that's my feeling on most of these shows now. I, like, like at least Tenchi knows martial arts, you know? Tenchi like respects his dad and grandpa and is trying to do right by all these weird aliens that live with him. And then like other aliens show up and he's like, well, I guess I got to fight these aliens. Like at least Tenchi in his dumb bullshit like, was trying to do stuff. Most of these characters aren't trying to do anything. I'm not watching Roni Kenshin. And I'll say this. We're talking about a lot of anime today, of course. And we're talking about a lot of stuff I have no interest in. We just talked about Rent a Girlfriend. I got no interest in Rent a Girlfriend. I don't want you to watch Roni Kenshin. If you watched it uh, in the past, you've read the manga in the past, it has a place in your heart cool uh don't i'm not gonna get into it again i have litigated this before uh this did not need a remake it does not need a new adaptation it does not need people to watch it it this show will do just fine without me telling you you know without me i don't have to pretend like this is cool it's got two core great St. Cecilian Pastor Lawrence is very cute. Obviously, it is a dog of uh, Kobo. They know what they're doing. This is this is so fucking slow. If you this is my romantic comedy of the season. I think this is the only one I'm watching. Uh, it's so goddamn slow that by the time they get to episode 12, I don't know if either character is gonna say how they feel about the other character. Like, I would totally believe that nobody is going to confess at the end of this show. But I love it. It's cozy and fun, and it's sad in some parts, and I think the way that it's really nice, it is not that chill of a slice of life. Uh, it's really good. Um, I really love Cecilia and Lawrence and their relationship, uh, and the support characters I think are really fun. Uh, Hazeletta is great, and, uh, and the other guy's all right. Um, but yeah, there's a lot, lot to like about this show. And, but, but if you were looking for a romance show where they like in the couple episodes in, they're like really getting down into the romance part. That's not this. This is a slow fucking burn, but it's a good one. I'm not watching shadow vs. flame. Uh, I didn't watch the first season of spy classroom. I know that there's a, I was told that there's a bullshit twist in Spy Classroom that doesn't make any sense and makes a bunch of characters uh, uh, that, that like retcons a bunch of characters in a way that doesn't make any sense at all. And now there's a second season to it. I'm not watching Spy Classroom season two. Sugar, Epper, Sugar Apple, Apple Fairy Tale season two. I'm surprised that this got... Uh, this was a two core. This is basically a two core with a little bit of a break there. Um, I am very surprised this got a second one. I don't know if this, I guess it did well enough. It's fine. It's, it's definitely like sad in some parts, but I think it's like good. 
I don't have a lot to say about it. I thought the first season was fine. I think this season is fine. Sweet Reincarnation uh, is over. Is is one of the first shows that started this season and ended. Um, you do not have to watch Sweet Reincarnation. You could totally skip this show. This is an isekai. Reincarnation isekai. Yes. Is the guy's name Pastry? 100%. There's a girl named Licorice. His dad is named Casserole. A lot of characters in the show have food themes. He is a world-renowned pastry chef that died in a pastry accident. There are two shows where a guy who loves a thing dies, and then because of the thing he loves, this is the other one. The Reborn Event Machine, then there's this one. This one, Sweet Reincarnation, he loves pastries, he dies, he's reborn, he's like, great, I'm going to be able to cook. Wait, I'm the son of a lord. I'm going to be the next lord. There's responsibilities. Most of this show revolves around this dude using copy magic. If he sees magic, he can copy it, which is an unbelievable cheat. It's him lamenting the fact that, well, we, we need goats so we can get more cheese and we need chickens so we can get more eggs. The dude just wants to make pastries. Uh, I started watching this wondering, hey, is he going to cook in this episode and like taking note of it? If the show had not aired uh, in the Sunday, Monday block where there weren't a lot of shows that I was watching, I don't know if I would have watched this show. If this was like a Wednesday show, I probably would have skipped it because there were a lot of shows on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, you do not need to watch this. It is totally okay to skip it. Uh, this is one of those shows that I don't remember existing. Sinduality Noir. This is based on a video game. Um, if you told me this was coming out next season, I'd be like, oh, cool. It's a two core. So it is technically coming out next season. But if you were like, no, this is the new anime that's coming out next season. It's a mecha show that I didn't watch an episode of because it just didn't look good. And I forgot it happened. Also, it's, a uh, it's on Hulu and Disney plus. So I didn't watch it. Uh, I don't have Hulu right now. So I did not see this. It, uh, uh, yeah. I might check it out someday, but it did not look that interesting to me. Uh, Ten Peru is the other not love Hina harem show. Um, this dude, his dad was so horny. His dad left him alone as a child with debts. Because his dad was like, all right, time for me to go sleep with a lot more women. There's a lot more women out there for me to sleep with. And so our dude was like, I'm never going to be with anyone. I'm horny and I inherited that from my dad. So I'm going to become a monk. And then also, uh-oh, I live in a house now at this, this, this monastery is now a boarding school. And also, uh... This dude's dad owes the monastery slash boarding school a lot of money. So he has to live there and work there for free. And he has to live there with a bunch of ladies who all have one note personalities that are all different. And they all come to loathe him or love him or both. And it might be good, but I will never know if it's good or not. Um, I just will never know. And those, yeah, some of them are sisters, too. Yeah. Uh, the Devil is a Part-Timer, Season 2, Part 2. I'm so... I, I was saying, I'm so glad for people. I'm not. I'm so bummed for people that love Devil is a Part-Timer. Because the season, it looks so bad. It's such a piss-poor adaptation of the manga. People waited a decade for more Devil is a Part-Timer. Which is not like the best anime in the world, but it was good. The original shouldn't look better than the new one. Technology is improved. And it just looks like shit. I'm never gonna, also never quite going to be into the idea of, oh, uh, well, we added a, a baby. We added a baby into the show. Now there's a young baby character. I'm just never going to be really into that. But mostly, I'm not into it because it looks like dog shit. 
Uh, the Duke uh, of Death and his maid season two. Did not watch this. Did not enjoy season one. The Gene of AI. Uh, I did not watch this either. Um, this did not look interesting to me. I was not in the mood for a psychological drama. Um, it just did not look interesting. And I did not watch it. Uh, this is on my... Because Madhouse is great. I love Madhouse as a... Uh, as a studio so this is on my list to maybe investigate in the future well, i don't know this might be something where i just read like a summary of the manga or i read a summary of the anime on like wikipedia the girl i i like forgot her glasses uh adding a young baby worked in urasai yatsura yeah yeah yes yes <laughs> uh takahashi is just built different uh, Regizzle, that is, yeah, 100%. The girl I like forgot her glasses, but um, I am starting to read this manga, and I like this manga. It's a fine manga. Gohans should not be allowed to be a studio. They need to, the, the Japanese government needs to step in and close Gohans because they are bad. I do not understand why they're allowed to be a company why anyone would sell their rights to them because i can't imagine this and the other uh anime that they have that they're doing has helped manga sales now i i said i've started to read the manga so maybe it has maybe other people were like this is kind of a fun idea i should read this instead of watching it uh go hands is dog shit they are a dog shit studio this anime is fine it, it, it's fine. Uh, the Great Cleric. Uh, got one more episode of this coming up. Uh, this is another isekai that you do not need to watch. You do not need to read the manga adaptation of this. Um, it is really slow. And I love that. Uh, the idea of a dude reincarnated given he realizes he's in a video game. Picks healing because he doesn't want to be a frontline fighter and it's just him being really cautious except when he's not except when the plot demands that he is reckless but most of the series he is like okay well i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i'm gonna look at it this way i'm gonna get training i'm gonna do this oh you want me to drink this so i get stronger sure oh i'll lose i'll use these spells oh this is an injustice i'm gonna stand up for myself lots of that shit and then it's like, then there's some parts where he's like, oh, he just made a dumb decision. Uh, this is enjoyable. Uh, this anime does not look good. This show has taken breaks and it's needed the, those breaks. Um, it. There is an episode that is, that is mostly flashbacks. And the flashbacks, you can tell that they, that, that they were, COVID hit them or they were there was arguments in the studio or something happened because the flashbacks look fine and then the other things there's moments where characters lips don't move like it's it is budget uh it's not go hands bad but it's not good like you see it's two two studios and like there's there are monsters, but the monsters don't come in until the second half. They didn't need CG in the first half, and they still use it for, like, cost-cutting. Uh, it, it's not great. Um, I don't think you need to watch it. Here's the other Gohans anime. The Masterful Cat is depressed again today. This is a fun manga that you should not watch the anime adaptation of because Gohans is garbage. Now... Does this look better than the other show they're doing? Yes. Is that a low bar? Yes. Is it still shitty looking? 100%. But it's, a, it, you know, like once you get the cat done, it's easier. There's less going on. Um, the cat can look weird because it's a giant anthropomorphized cat. Uh, this is a cute story. I'm enjoying the manga. I do not care for this anime. Uh, I think I got through like three episodes where I was like, fuck off with this. It's just, it hurts my eyes. Gohans is 
just a nightmare studio. Just a nightmare studio. Uh, the most heretical last boss queen from Villainous to Savior. This is a Isekai, um, uh, uh, you know, Villainous Isekai thing. Uh, Otome game. Um, it's fun. There's an interest. This is a tough thing. This is a tough thing for me to say because I've said this before tonight. I've said this tonight uh, where it's got an interesting premise, but the premise I don't like what how it's played out. Um, which is a tough spot to be in because I'm saying it does something that other other uh, stories like this don't do because we've had plenty of uh, I've, I'm a villainous. We've had there's going to be another one coming up uh, I think next season this coming season of uh, oh I'm in this Otoma game my favorite is actually the villainous I'm going to save the villainous we've had that before the twist on this one is um, she's the villainous she realizes. Uh, what she's going to be like in this game. She uh, tries her best to not do it. We see what she would have been capable of if she had, if she had not taken over this character. And there are moments where various characters in the series have visions of an alternate reality, which is, of course, the video game reality. And that's an interesting premise, but it means that you co were constantly watching terrible things happen to people but it doesn't happen to it doesn't happen to this person. It happens to an alternate version of this person. So it's kind of meaningless. It like somewhat affects what's going on, but it mostly just makes her feel a sense of guilt over things she didn't do, and she's actively trying to not do. And then there are other characters who are just like, oh, that's a, I had a weird dream, and it's like, yeah, we get it. She sucks. Like, I, why are we dwelling on this? I don't think it has any payoff. Uh, it's frustrating because it's an interesting premise. It's just not fun to check out. And also some of the characters have very dumb names. And I don't like that. That's a minor point. Oh, there's 13 episodes of Undead Murder Farce. I'm so happy that I get more Undead Murder Farce. Y'all don't. Oh, God. Um, the novels this is based on is called Undead Girl Murder Farce. It's based on uh, four novels, um, uh, which I have not read. Uh, I did not. I did not come into this season thinking I was going to watch this show, but people were like, "Pat, you got to fucking watch this show." Pat, you got to watch this show. So I, I added it to my queue and I started watching it, and it's so fucking good. It is a detective series with a. Uh, a fuzzy kitten says undead murder farce has generally made me laugh harder than any show this season. It's got some fucking great humor to it. It's got situational comedy happening in it. Hulk made me laugh in some parts. This makes me like surprise laugh. Aya Rindo is a uh, the world's greatest detective. Fuck Sherlock Holmes. Aya Rindo is the greatest detective. Her head got cut off. She's a head in a fucking bird cage. She's trying to solve some mysteries and find the man that separated her head. Unless this demon man, the half human, half demon, uh, uh, Suguru, will kill her because he could do it. And, and she'll give him the secret to make it so he's not going to turn fully demon. And he's like, yeah, me killing you, you making sure I'm not a demon. That sounds good. What if instead we team up? And find the guy that made me this way and the guy that made you this way and we kick his ass. And we'll do it by becoming the greatest detectives that the world has ever seen. Uh, and it's unbelievable. Uh, there are so many, like, his not a star. Well, there's one real person in it. There's one actual real person in it. Uh, but then there's just like, Hey, you know fiction? Yeah, we know about it too. Because it's like, we got the Phantom of the Opera. We've got uh, uh, Lupin. We've got uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes and Watson. And Fog from Around the World in 80 Days. And uh, I don't want to say some of the ones. Um, there's a real person. And they go out of their way to be like, that guy doesn't know magic. There are vampires and werewolves and a headless immortal and a half demon. 
but they want to make very clear that this person who is a real person from history is not magical. He just goes sleight of hand. It's a great fuck you. There's a homunculus. Uh, the perfect killing weapon is being created in this. And it's just pleasant and great. Uh, I won't, again, I won't spoil uh, uh, some stuff here. I've mentioned some characters that are in there. Um, I, I've said this because it's not a spoiler. Uh, th there's the first like, hey, here's what's going on. They go to solve their first case. When they go to solve their first case that we see, they, they've had other cases. Um, it starts with like, Dracula is dead. And now vampires are trying to accumulate into society. And it's like, wait, Dracula's dead? We don't even fucking see that shit. We don't know what happened with Dracula. Dracula's fucking dead. Don't worry about it. It's so good. Please watch Undead Murder Farce. It is the show of the season. This is my favorite show of the season. I will not shut up about it. Uh, I will be mad if this does not win awards uh, from Crunchyroll. It won't. It's so fucking good. Watch Undead Murder Farce. It's so fucking funny and weird and cool. Um, it's great. I don't know anything about this. Um, I don't know anything about Johan de Farrell and Sunshine in the Mirror. Sunrise put this out. It looks cute. I didn't watch it. Uh, I saw music and fantasy and I was like, no, nah, I think I'm okay. I believe this is the, is this the, is this is one of the Love Live spinoffs, I believe. I believe this is a fantasy spinoff of Love Live. But I don't watch Love Live, so I didn't watch this. And then what could be the other best show this season. We're ending real strong. ZOM 100, Bucket List of the Dead. Now, have I liked this show as it's gone on as much as I liked the first episode? No. The first episode, I think everybody should just check out. Just watch the first episode. Watch this really interesting juxtaposition. There are zombies, and but the show is drab and sad and black and white with little bits of color of red before the zombie apocalypse happens. And when the zombie apocalypse happens, our main character comes to life and becomes alive. And that's where everything fucking kicks off and picks up. And the, you see there's a photo in there. Hey, there's a fucking zombie shark in this show. But the real zombie was Akira working his dead-end job uh, in a black company, losing out his fr to his friends and his family and having no time to get new work and feeling suicidal and realizing that his only outlet is having a crush on a coworker who is having an affair with the boss and he knows that and even if she wasn't she wasn't interested in him anyway and he knows that too and then as a fucking apocalypse happens and it's like all right well what do i want to do before i die i'm going to make a bucket list and it's not great but it's good it's really good and like I said, that first episode is one of my favorite things this season. Uh, the horror is low. I mean, there's zombies and, hey, bad shit happens in this show. People the, people get introduced in, in an episode, so when they die, you're like, oh, like, it happens. Also, a German girl got added to the, the crew recently. Mm -hmm. Late show, German otaku got added. Uh, TV shorts. A lot of these TV shorts don't, don't get adapted, so I don't know what they are. Uh, we'll scroll through these very fast. Uh, uh, Theater of Darkness. Uh, uh, yeah, Yami Shiba is up to uh, 11. If you like this series, you already know that there were more episodes of it. Uh, I own no orchestra. Didn't watch. Uh, uh, these are the leftovers. These are the two arcs. Uh, Eden zero season two um i am behind on this the second season of eden zero uh the first season i believe was on netflix and then like i don't know if the first season it's ended up on crunchyroll yet eden zero if you look at this art and you go wait is that just fucking fairy tale 
Yeah, it's the guy that made Fairy Tale and uh, and Rave Master. Uh, in this instance, he just like took characters from Fairy Tale and redesigned them slightly and put them in a new thing. Um, like Happy's a robot, Happy the cat, and like there's a bunch of other stuff, and it's um totally okay. Uh, a lot of the voice actors from Fairy Tale came back for this one. Um, it is a perfectly fine space thing. There's cute characters and fun characters and some sadness and people tapping into ancient powers. Um, I think it's totally all right. Uh, Mix Misi story. Did not watch season one of Mix. Don't know. Uh, I stopped watching Sacrificial Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts because it was so. Look, the backgrounds are look are painterly. The backgrounds look like they're hand painted. I know they're not, but they look hand painted. This this show has style, but every episode is the same fucking thing. Some manner of beast hates that the demon, the King of Beasts and demons, is gonna marry a human girl. And they tell this girl, we don't want you here. And the king is like, I'm going to kill you. And the, the girl is like, don't. And then they do some sort of shenanigans that clearly would get them killed because they don't like her. And then she forgives them and barely overcomes it. And he goes, then he's like, well, now you're going to die. And she's like, don't kill them. And that's almost every episode. Eventually, like a couple cool things happen. And there are a couple characters that are neat. But most episodes are just that, and I'm kind of over it. I did like the part where the hero goes to rescue her, and she's like, I don't want to be rescued. I don't love you. We barely know each other. You're saving the idea of me. And I think that's unbelievably cool that that's in this show. But overall, I'm so surprised this got a, a, a two core. I just don't. Oh, um, I did not watch a, any of these movies. I don't think I, I should watch City Hunter. The fact that they like did uh, more of a City Hunter, another like a City Hunter, like one off episode. That's kind of cool. Uh, didn't watch that. Didn't watch that. Didn't watch Resident Evil Death Island. Sandland. Um, as far as I know, we didn't. This came out, but not here. Yeah, we didn't get Sandland. I think we're gonna get a Sandland at it. We're gonna get the English of it. It would be wild not to. Like I know a lot of people don't know Sandland, but if you're just like, "Hey, Akira Toriyama made this," then people will be like, "Oh, I want to watch that." Okay. In the same way, I read Sandland. Because they put it in the Shonen Jump America. Because they were like, hey, Akira Toriyama made this. And I was like, well, I'll read it. So I would like to watch this at some point. Now, is there a fan sub of it out there somewhere? I bet there is. I do my best not to watch those. I know too many people in the industry. But, uh, and also I cover anime on, on stream. And for a very long time... I had a, uh, a gifted Crunchyroll account. I pay for Crunchyroll now, but I used to have a gifted account. Uh, oh, the Shin Chan uh, uh, movie. That's just a great... This is a fucking great... Him him like in a sushi roll that looks like it's a cannon. That's, that's some good shit. That's just some good shit. Uh, I have not seen The Boy and the Heron. I will watch that at some point, I'm sure. Someday. Someday I'll watch that. And I will enjoy the Ghibli. Uh, I don't know anything about that. Uh, Track and Starfield. That's a mecha series. That's a mecha series. There's nothing in this description that tells me this is a mecha series, a sci-fi mecha series. The oh, I guess someone disappears. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, OVAs and specials. Uh, we'll go through this quickly because we still have to talk about all the new anime that's coming out. Oh God. Um, so this is how any chart handles Netflix series where they release all of them at once. They put them in on a, so if you were like, 
Pat, why didn't you talk about Baki Hanma season two? That's because it's down in this category. That'll be the same thing with other things coming out on Netflix uh, next season. Um, there's so much. I love that they keep making more Baki. They keep making more Baki shit. And it, over the years, they keep doing it. And they keep putting out more and more Baki. There's so, some kind of person that loves this stuff. It's not me, but I do respect it. I respect the love for Baki. I have not watched any of the Bastard ONA. I'm glad it got made. It's a weird choice, but that's kind of cool. Um, there was more episodes of Bear Bear Kuma Punch, which is the Kuma 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 Bear Punch is the sequel to Kuma 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 Bear. Bear 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 Kuma is the side story gag comic, and Punch is the sequel to that. Uh, it's just the, the little side stories focusing other characters. I appreciate the Kuma 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 Bear, Bear 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 Kuma. That's fun. Uh, it's not a sports. I don't know why sports is in there. <laughs> why did someone put sports there? Uh, Beyblade Burst Quad Strike. No, I didn't watch that. I didn't watch that. Um, I don't know what that is. Did anybody, we didn't, we didn't get that. Nobody, nobody picked that up. Uh, no, I didn't watch this. Uh, did not watch anything from Fate. I have watched two Fate series. I have watched Fate Stay Night and The Cooking One. Uh, menu at Enya's whatever. I watched The Cooking One because that's cute as hell. Uh, Gamera Rebirth. I have not watched this. Uh, did not watch the two episodes extras that were for this series. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think I watched any of these things here. We'll scroll quickly. Sometimes it's fun just to be like, hey, here's a bunch of... Oh, yeah. I did not watch part two of Record of Ragnarok 2, part two. Um, I watched one whole ass episode of Record of Ragnarok. I understand. I will say this. If you see clips of this show on YouTube, that's the way to watch this shit. If you watch clips, you will see the most outlandish, wonderfully weird uh, uh, fight scenes. And you won't see that most of the episode is characters barely moving and barely interacting and just a lot of dialogue. Because it's like a fight scene and then like a bunch of people talking about bullshit that does not matter, barely moving their lips. And then like a pretty okay fight scene. So just watch clips on uh, on YouTube. That's the way to watch that show. Uh, did not watch more seven seven deadly sins stuff uh did not see that i did watch the four episodes of tonakawa over the moon uh, over the moon for you high school days it's fine i think tonakawa over the moon for you is a great series um uh, this one, this one was like, uh, we're going to add a bunch of other characters that are young. Okay. And I don't watch that. Oh man. I didn't know there was more of this. Where is it? How do did, nobody picked it up? Damn it. Hi dive. Pick this up. Hi dive. Picked up the first season of this show. Q and executive officer, CEO. It's a little girl. Who's the CEO of a company for some reason. Um, and they're all shorts and they just batched all the shorts together and you just, you're just like, oh, that was cute. And there's just more of it. Cause they're all really short episodes. Uh, and that's how high dive. They just put it together as like big chunks of it. That is a totally watchable, adorable, dumb show. Cute executive officer. And there was a sequel and there's been 13 episodes, but they didn't pick it up again. Bullshit. That's bullshit. All right, we, we got to fall. Now we can do the preview part. I'm going to make sure that we are on 
uh, by title. We are not doing by title, although we can see by next episode is FLCL, but we can go by title. Reminder, if you're watching this later on YouTube, it's been days since I recorded this. If you're watching this now, um, uh, watching this now live on Twitch. Hello. Thank you. Things important things of note for this. Some shows here will not have an English Rom uh, Romani, you know, uh, translation here. Um, uh, they will just have their Japanese name. Some of these shows will not say what channel, the, what station or network they're on. Streamer. What streamer they're on. I don't know why I couldn't say those words. I'm talking a lot. Um, so, you know, we hover over and we're like, oh, that's on Crunchyroll. Great. 16-bit uh, sensation. Another layer. No description here. Crunchyroll picked it up. No idea. Another layer to me implies that this is a sequel, but I don't know what 16-bit sensation is. It looks like my dis by looking at the photo, uh, Undead. Uh, oh no, this was Fuzzy said this a while ago. I just noticed it. Sorry, I already replied to it as well. Yeah, 16-bit uh, sensation. Is this a group that's making a video game? That could be fun. It's a comedy slice of life. I don't know. There's no description for it. I'm somewhat intrigued. Uh, a girl and her guard dog is granddaughter of a crime boss. Uh, and then a young leader. What? Oh, no. Wait, no. What? No. No, I'm not going to watch this. She's 15. He's 26. He lies to go to high school. They're in love. Fuck off. I'm not watching that. A returner's magic should be special. Uh, pass or me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, wait, no, get out of here. What? No. Um, no, I'm, we're, we're good. Um, I looking at I looked at the trailer for this and I was like, this doesn't feel like the manhwa. Uh, a Returner's Magic Should Be Special is a manhwa. Uh, it is getting an anime adaptation. It does not feel like the manhwa. Um, the premise I think is cool. It is a time travel like, oh, I'm gonna do. I got my life over, um, uh, and now I can change the world. And it is a totally okay manhwa i don't know if i'm gonna watch this um it's totally fine um and again i like seeing manhwa get an anime adaptation i think that's neat i just don't know if this one's gonna be it for me um this is the third season of b project uh i don't know what that is it seems to be an anime uh boys cgi idol thing Berserk of Gluttony. I don't... So this is Source Light Novel. So I believe this is the light novel. The light. There's a light novel and a manga, Berserk of Gluttony. There's also a, um, a licensed uh, uh, manhwa, a Korean comic of Berserk of Gluttony that is based on the light novel as well. So there's a bunch of this out there. The premise is pretty all right. This dude... He's just always fucking hungry and can't be satisfied. Turns out his hunger was was murder and absorbing powers and skills. And that's why he has just always been hungry. Food has not filled the void. The void was murder. Um, and so the main character is like sat. The main character becomes overpowered by virtue of like feeling like uh i guess i'm well shit i haven't killed anyone that deserved it in a while i don't know like i'm gonna lose my mind it's interesting i don't think it's good but it's interesting this might be on your wish list or watch list this might not be you know i don't know if i'm gonna watch it uh it depends on what day it airs honestly beyblade x i'm good uh Bokuran no Amaro Protocol. This is an original story. Uh, right now, we don't know who picked it up. We don't know if anybody's going to pick it up. 
Uh, second year student with his mother, younger sister. Uh, okay. This story is a guy who gives up his dreams uh, of being a gamer, a professional pro gamer, to work at a uh, esports cafe because his sister uh, is, you know, his father died. She's hurt. He's going to give up his dream of being a pro esportser and just work at a, a cafe, which seems like oh, that's it's a bummer. But he gets to see his friends. Um, and then if it, it turns out that the they have a bunch of debts, so he has to get back into a game, and one of his former uh, friends is now going to be his rival, and so it's it saved the rec center, but the rec center is an esports cafe, and instead of a wacky race or a, a boat race or a ski competition, it's be good at a video game. And I'm not going to watch it, but that's kind of fun. That's kind of cool. I don't think I'm going to check it out. Again, I don't even, I'll get a time of this recording. We don't know who's picking it up or if anyone will. Okay. Oh, boy. This is a long ass fucking name. Bokusha no Nari to Miyako ni Dictea Muse ga S rank ni nata. Not eta. I said some of those words correctly. Um,. This is a story about a dude who lost his leg uh, as an adventurer. And he's like, well, I'm done being an adventurer. But then he finds a baby and he saves that baby's life. There is an English name of this anime. I just can't remember what it is, but there is an English name for this anime. Um, and I don't remember what it is. I'm looking it up now because, there, the, well, the manga has an English translation. I should say that. The manga has an English translation. So, uh... This uh knee uh all right uh let's see uh yeah tell me the name of this show the other name of this is oh they don't have it weird okay well my anime list also doesn't have an English name for this, but I've read some of this manga. So basically a dude loses his leg, gives up being an adventurer, finds a baby, raises it, and then shit gets weird. Um, but basically she becomes an S-rank adventurer. Uh, and she constantly wants to come back to hang out with her dad because her dad is the most important person in her life. Uh, and then he gets wrapped up in some other stuff and then shit gets sad and shit gets interesting. It's good. I'm going to be watching it. I don't know. I hope someone picks it up. Uh, but it, that's a solid show. Uh, Buta no liver wa kanesu shiro. Uh, I, this one is a weird, there are not a lot of isekai out this season. This will not be one I watch. It is a postmodern isekai. This dude, an unappealing otaku, awakens in the body of a pig after he passes out while eating raw pig liver. And she can read minds, so don't worry about it. She knows what's going on, and she knows he's gross, and she does want to apparently eat him. Uh, but then he's going to save the day, and I'm not going to watch this. I don't know if anyone's going to pick this up. I'm good. I'm good. There's only, there's a, not a lot of Isaac out this season. This won't be one I watch. Uh, more of the Captain Subasa uh, uh, from 2018. I'm good. Uh, I think it's cool they're making more of this, but I, I'm all right. Dead Mount Death Play Part 2. I know some people that very much enjoy dead mount death play i did not really like the two episodes of it that i watched what is the name of this better show up somewhere high dive crunchy roll you better fucking pick up this show uh uh deco boko majo no oyako jijo this is a fun comedy 
about a, a, a witch who raised the girl and and then she becomes awesome like incredible it is a fun found family it is an action series but also kind of a chill slice of life there's only so m- look look we've 2023 has been a fantastic year for anime unless the kind of anime that you love is girls doing stuff chill slice of life where go- girls get together and do stuff We have been, it has been a desert for that. So I will take what I can get. And that includes this. Uh, Dog signal. Um, This, the art for this looks so interesting. I don't know, like, uh, I don't know if, I don't know if anyone's going to pick it up. It's getting 20 episodes, which is weird. Dog signal. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Dr. Stone New World, which is uh, uh, part two, the sequel to New World. I have kind of... I love the world of Dr. Stone. I love the art style of Dr. Stone. I love the animation of Dr. Stone. TMS does a great job with it. I don't like the story of Dr. Stone. I just don't like it. I wish I did because there's so much cool shit on the edges of it. But the actual plot of Dr. Stone, I'm just not super into. Uh, This is a sequel to Daigo the Fire Company, which is Rescuer in Orange. It is a firefighting anime, but not a magical or mystical one, just firefighting. That's kind of cool. So this is Grunge, which is the fourth season of FLCL. And you're like, wait, what happened to the third season? Don't worry about it. There's more FLCL. This is the sequel to Alternative. Um, and then there's Grunge. Uh, there's Grunge. And then there's the fifth season, Shoe Gaze. And that comes out 10 years. At, look, I don't think... I don't think... This is not a hot take. There was no reason to do more FLCL. And it is diminishing returns. The idea of just doing like a couple episodes per season of like, in, that's interesting. That's a fun way to go. But like, FLCO is not perfect, but it is standalone and didn't need more. Um, okay. Fear, uh, Fear in Beyond Journey's End by Matt. Madhouse is doing this shit. I'm so, yes. So Regizzle, I don't know. I think I think FLCO was perfect for its time. Looking back, there's some parts of it that I don't love on rewatch, but I don't think you need to make more FLCO. Farron, Beyond Journey's End. I'm so glad Madhouse is doing this. Madhouse is the perfect studio for this. I think Bones could have also done a great job with this. A1 Pictures, if this was A1 Pictures A team, sure. Their B team, maybe not as much. Madhouse is doing it. Hell yeah. This is the anime of the season that your pretentious anime friends will tell you about. I am also, even though I am your scumbag anime uh, watcher, I am also your pretentious anime watcher. I am, I contain multitudes. I am the pretentious anime watcher that is telling you that the show of the season for you to watch and be the most hyped about is a slow burn fucking adventure series that is lowercase a adventure about the last remaining member of the hero's party that defeated the demon lord and brought peace to the realm. And she is just an elf who's going to live forever, seemingly. And she's just going out about her goddamn days. She meets some cool people along the way. She gets some new, a new party gets formed. Uh, and it is just fucking easy going. And sometimes it's dramatic and sad and violent. And there's action. And like, it doesn't get to like Dragon Ball Z levels of next time. But there's a fight that takes a while in manga. 
and it will take a little while probably in the anime. Actually, I don't even know if we'll get to it because there's, I don't know how slow they're going to be. There's so many, there's so many montages in the manga just to like see what's up and little gags. Um, it's so gorgeous and beautiful. I'm so psyched. It's Madhouse. Uh, and it's, yeah. It's, it's like a wonderful adventure. Uh, I'm so excited that we get it. I'm so excited we get to watch it. Girlfriend, Girlfriend, Season 2. I did not watch Girlfriend, Girlfriend. There are four girlfriends. They, it shouldn't be. It should be called Girlfriend, 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 Girlfriend. Uh, which maybe it shouldn't be called that. Anyway, I didn't watch the first season. I believe that's the season where it's a guy likes a girl, and then another girl confesses, and his big plan is to ask the one girl... Hey, can we, can, can this be, uh, uh, can we do like a poly arrangement? I'm sorry. I'm so stupid. I just couldn't say no to her. Yeah. And then there's an, and there's like a girl that's spying on them that wants to learn the secrets and she moves in, but I guess she's also now going to be interested in her. Yeah. Cause there's two other girls that like her. Yeah, no, nah, I didn't watch it. Goblin Slayer season two, and this is this is a this is the second season. There was a ONA in between the first two, the first season, of the season. Look, the action in Goblin Slayer is fantastic. I'm not going to be watching this weekly. I'm going to watch this in bursts. I'm not going to be covering this on stream weekly. Uh, I'm going to watch Goblin Slayer. It's good. I don't know what else to tell you. It's violent. And there's humor. I think that the last... I think if they ended Goblin Slayer at the uh, season one, the last episode, is such a cathartic, lovely little episode. Like, the last couple episodes are, like, so cool. Uh, and they're kick-ass, but they're also, like, Oh, yeah. Oh, and it's like great. And I know that I'm just going to get bummed out by a lot of shit that happens in season two. Um, Hoshin Kuzu Telepath. It's a girl's doing. This is the girl's doing thing. This is the girl's doing thing uh, show of the season. And one of them is a think that says that she's an alien. Um, I'm excited for this. This seems cute and great. And I don't know if anyone's picked it up and I hope they do. Cause that's just neat. I like this. I think it's going to be fun. High schooler who is bad at communicating could relate to Zoom John. Yeah. Um, she feels like an alien and then she meets an alien or is she an alien? I don't know, but I'm excited for it. That sounds fun. Uh, we got the sequel to Hypnosis Mike uh, Division Rap Battle. Here's all you need to know about this. Um, unlike the first season, which depicted the first Division Rap Battle, it will be set after the second Division Rap Battle. Um, this is a uh, multimedia project. It started with a bunch of CDs, like literal CDs. Um This is the insidious, brilliant thing. So they were like, we're going to have this anime. And there's going to be these battles between these different rap groups. And you get to help decide who wins these battles by buying the singles. So if you like an artist, buy their single and maybe they'll win their rap battle. And also a good portion of these rap groups feature musicians that don't rap. And they're all made up characters. They're all people being... Per so the people that sing also do the, the acting. And guess what? Some of them are not good actors. It's a completely wonderful to hear about bullshit multimedia project that I don't think is good. I shall survive using potions. It's an action series that I'm excited about. It is, this is the isekai that I'm excited about this season. There's only a couple, there's only a couple isekai in general. 
And this is the one that I'm excited about. Um, it's a girl that like, she can make potions, overpowered potions. And she's going to survive making her overpowered potions. It's fun. It's a fun idea. Uh, office lady in a fantasy world. I'm in love with the villainous. This is the isekai that I... This this manga is so generic that I don't know. I, I might watch the first episode just to see. Do I love... Do I... Do I want more Yuri romance in anime? Of course I do. Of course I want more Yuri. Of fucking course I do. Also, I haven't read the light novel. It might be way gayer than the manga because the manga is always less gay. So maybe I should check this out. Where the girl who becomes a character uh, in an Otome game decides I'm... My favorite character is the villainess. I'm in love with her. I'm going to pursue her. I like it. Uh, I I don't really like the manga, but I'm going to check it out. Because, like I said, maybe they toned it down. Maybe it's way gayer. Uh, Kami Arabi God.app Crunchyroll picked this up. What the fuck is this shit? Uh, this dude sucks, but he likes somebody. Everything sucks. And then his smartphone's like, hey, guess what? I want to have sex with someone. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> The more I read about this, the more I'm like, no, I'm not going to. It's like a death game, battle royale, creepy arrow. We're good. It looks like garbage. Um, Kamo Shashi Ron no Kingdan Suri. Um, this is a private investigator and a police detective working together and solving mysteries. Um... I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I got no read on this one. Uh, Kawage Boys Sing. It is a, uh, that's a, like an, not an idol, but it's a music anime. That doesn't really do anything for me. Okay. This is not something I want to watch. This is a romance slice of life. It is in that category of loser dude. And girl that seems to have everything together and they like each other and it doesn't make any sense. Um, but uh, I don't know. I might check it out, but it, it does not. This does nothing for me. This series, the this, the whole idea of it. Yeah. Um, Precure 20th. This is covering the 20th anniversary of the Precure, Precure franchise. Um it shows some of the kids who were precursors at Grown Ups. That's fun. Uh, sorry. Um, okay. Uh, this is a this is another bullshit harem anime. I won't watch. This dude asked out a hundred women, and they all said no. Turns out it was God's mistake, and now ladies love him. Oh no. But how is he going to choose which one to, 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 to like back? I'm not going to watch that. Uh, second season of a show, a music uh, idol show. So this manga I gave up on. It was good, but it was just like very samey. I'm probably going to try the anime because I do like fantasy. I do want to watch romance shows. I mean, I've been shitting on romance shows, but I do want to watch some. Um, uh, this is a show about a dude that like is scary and people are like, he's a demon Lord. And then a girl shows up, uh, and, uh, she basically like kicked out of her country under, she's, she got made to be a villainess and he's like, well, I'll show you what evil is. You'll love 
my brand of evil and his brand of evil isn't evil at all. It's just selfishness and like doing stuff for yourself and they kind of fall in love and it's cute and he is really strong, but also people do over do believe he is more evil than he is. It's like kind of fun. Uh, I'll teach her all sorts of bad things. It's kind of like his line, but that's not the bad things are. Yeah. Just like demanding to have fun. All right. We got the ancient Magus bride season two, part two shit got fucking creepy in part one. We are at magic school. Would she say uh, magic college? I should say, don't worry. We got more stuff with Elias. Uh, do we spend enough time with the spirit that lives in their house? No, but she gets to do a little bit here and there. It's cool. Still a plus still very good. Big fan of the ancient mage's bride. Happy for season two, part two. Uh, MF ghost. Y'all. I am so scared that this is going to suck, but I know the music is going to bang. Uh, it is the maker of initial D is making the, not a sequel to initial D, but a show set in the world of initial D. Uh, but basically it's just like, because of self-driving cars, you can now street race. It's legal to street race because the roads are empty. Yes, you knew I was going to watch MF Ghost. Uh, I'm a big Initial D fan. Uh, I think Initial D tried their best with digital and CG and traditional animation, mixing them, where like, you know, the car was CG, but the rear view mirror was digital. And I hope that it looks cool, but I know the music is going to be great. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see how it, this goes. It's, it's not initial D, but it's initial D. So, you know, you know, I'm going to check that out. Uh, Migi to Dolly. I don't get what's going on here. Uh, there's some sort of, this feels like it's based on like a, uh, Japanese folk tale that I don't know. Like, that's the vibe I'm getting off this. I don't know about that. Uh, my new boss is Goofy. That, that's the show. Uh, that's the premise. This guy left, quit his job because he got harassed by his boss. And his new boss is a goof. And an airhead. And that's the show. I can't remember if this manga is gay or not. It might just be a bunch of dudes. You know what I mean? It might not be like. It might not be subtext. But it might. I'm probably going to watch the first episode. At least see if I like these characters. I don't know. It's a fun idea. Uh, I'm not going to watch Seven Deadly Sins stuff. I've, I've done my time with Seven Deadly Sins. Overtake is kind of a fun idea. A dude that like has kind of like lost his luster uh, for being a photographer, and he ends up becoming like the coach uh, of a youth group um, for F four racers, like high school F four racers. It's kind of a fun idea. I'm not gonna watch this. Paradox live the animation. Avex and uh, G Crest hip hop theme multimedia project takes place in the near future where rappers wear accessories that contain a metallic substance called phantom metal. I am not going to watch this, but it does sound bad. The result is a new type of spectacular concert. Sure. Uh, Ragna, Ragna Crimson is a, is a manga I have tried to read several times. Um, first episode has a run time of an hour. I'm not going to watch this. If I hear, this is one of those shows where if I hear from friends, Pat, you got to fucking watch this. And maybe I will. Uh, but the manga just didn't do anything for me at all. So I probably won't. Sekin Gaku no Makin Sukai is 
Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is not an isekai. You're looking at it and you go, Pat, this is an isekai. No, it's just a reincarnation anime. So I don't have to at least watch the first episode. Uh, this is a demon lord gets sealed away and a thousand years later wakes up and he's a boy and he's got to go to school. And he's got to unlock his powers and learn about what happened. And it's not good. It's not a good manga. I didn't like the manga. Look, can you say that the world has changed so much after a thousand years? No. You, you, look, you can argue that a thousand years, the world could have changed enough that you could argue that it's an isekai. But it, does, it hasn't changed enough in a thousand years. It's not. It's not an isekai. Yes, Encino Man isn't an isekai. Um, partially also because Encino Man isn't really the main character. He's not totally the main character. Um, this, yeah, this manga isn't good. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna watch it. Uh, Sangri La Frontier. This is a... I want to play a shitty MMO, a VR MMO, because I, I, I'm not going to let this crap video game beat me. You know how sometimes you buy a game and you spent fucking 60, 70, 80 dollars on a video game and it sucks shit. And you're like, well, I'm going to finish this game because fuck you. That's why this is an anime version of that. I have never done that. I have never finished the video game that I hated. I have stopped every video game that I hate. So I was, couldn't be me. Shy. 8 bits putting out Shy. This looks awful. The sudden uh, widespread appearance of heroes, people with supernatural powers who wish only for peace, has ended all wars. The world where heroes of each country work to maintain this newfound peace. The one protecting Japan is a young girl named Shy, who is crippling as Shy. I'm okay. Spy Family Season 2. You know it. You know we got that Spy Family Season 2. There's a movie. We got Wit and Cloverworks working together again. You know I'm going to be watching this week in and week out. More fucking Spy Family. Hell yeah. Tear Moon Empire. Uh, this is a do it again, die, get reincarnated as yourself time thing. It's a it's a time displacement. Um, so gone back in time, second chance at life. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's even a Spy Family game. Yes, there is a Spy Family game uh, starring Anya. Uh, coming out. Um, Tier Moon Empire, I have not read the source material because I, I, I don't know if there's a manga adaptation. But I haven't read the line novel. Um, but, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to watch this. Uh, I don't know. It's not an isekai, so I don't have to. I try to watch every isekai, if, if you're curious. People that watch me frequently know um the apothecary diaries is uh yeah yeah okay that seems all right i don't think i'm gonna watch it but that seems all right the eminence and shadow season two and it's a guy i will not be watching i I understand why some people really like this show because it is like this weird postmodern like exploration of the genre. But I think that those folks are giving this show too much credit. Uh, I'm just, I wasn't interested in it. I'm not interested in it. Well, continue right. I am interested in watching more of the Faraway Paladin, the Lord of Rust Mountain, uh, which is a sequel to the Fall, the Faraway Paladin. Now, do I think that I got less and less invested in the Faraway Paladin as it went on? Yes. The incredibly slow 
and patient and lovely build of this reincarnated character into an overpowered main character that would in other shows would be skipped over with the time dash was really fun. Uh, the term I was looking for earlier with the Tear Moon Empire was regression. That's a regression show where the main character is regressed back to their childhood. Uh, it's regression. I couldn't remember the term. There you go. There's a lot of that in Manwa. Um, uh, so, yeah. So this is a continuing adventures of our guy at, who is raised by the strongest fighter, the strongest mage, and the strongest healer, and has a goddess that is trying to rejuvenate the world. And so he's just out there doing good and trying to uh, increase smiles and acknowledgement of his goddess. Uh, and sometimes he has to fucking murder some shit. Um, and there'll be new friends. I think the Faroy Paladin is really enjoyable. It, like I said, it, I do lose its luster. I think the first eight, nine episodes, maybe, yeah, maybe seven, eight episodes are really fucking solid. And then it, it dips a little bit. Um, uh, we got another idol show. Idol Master of a Million Live. I'm good. The Kingdom of Ruin. Which is once blessed the human race with winds of peace. Uh, but then they made gears. Uh, and they got science. And then they were like, hey, witches, you suck. We got, we, we made, we made science. So get out of here. Um, and then one guy's like, I'm going to kill all of you. And that's an anime. I think I'm okay. Also, uh, Yokohama Animation Lab, I don't love. I think this is a easily skippable, forgettable anime. The Rising of the Shield Hero Season 3. Against my better judgment, I will watch every episode of The Rising of the Shield Hero Season 3. I really just, there's, I don't know when I stopped liking this show. I think it's, you know, honestly, I think it's when he became a better person, which is a weird thing for me to say. But I think when he became likable is when I stopped liking it as much. Because uh, I think this, I think the most interesting part of the Resident Evil Shield Hero was his struggle to survive and to be accepted. Also, reminder that there are there is a character in there who is a slave that he purchased who is in love with him, and who. Because of leveling up, became, got, got a full-grown body with the mind of a child. Which, oh, that wasn't a mind of a child. It was just a child's body. And her mind age, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. No, it's not fine. There's some shit about this. It's not fine. Um, the girl who's also a mythical bird is pretty all right. The, the, the girl who's a bird... Who hates the spear uh, hero? That's okay. I I'm all right with the girl that's a bird. But yeah, at a certain point, I was just like, uh, why am I still watching this? But I'm gonna still watch. I'm gonna watch every episode of this season. I'm also gonna watch every episode of this season. Oh, baby, this shit's for me. I don't, what, who did I impress? Who did I, who, who, who was so thrilled with me that they gave me more of the saint's magic power is omnipotent. Uh, a season two, I, two women get summoned. One of them is decided that they're the saint and the other is just kind of dumped somewhere. The one who was dumped somewhere is the saint and she knows it. And eventually everybody else knows it. But she just wants to study medicine because she's psyched about studying medicine and potions and just doing whatever. And in the course of just being a cool lady doing her thing, a bunch of handsome, at, just gorgeous, handsome, cool men are like, you're great. It is high on romance. It is a novella style romance slice of life. The isekai, the isekai is just there to get you in the door. 
She could have just gone to a... This could be set in France and be the same kind of show. There's magic and all that, but you, you get what I'm saying. There's like the guy that she actually really into who was the ice knight because he uses ice powers, but also because he was so cold, but he's warmed up to her. And then there's like two different guys that look, that look out for her. And then there's like a guy that sucks and is shitty, but he actually cares about her. And he, but he's like, and then also not knowing these other dudes were into her. There's like the captain of this uh, mercenary group that was also just like, you should stay here and keep being the saint and hang out with us. Uh, and there's just like eligible bachelors who are all into our nice main character. Um, and the guy that was shitty to her, he got his comeuppance in the first season. Don't even fucking worry about that guy. Uh, I love it. It's gorgeous. Uh, Albert Hawk. Albert Hawk is the Ice Knight. He's the Ice Knight. Yeah, we got Jonathan and Jude. Oh, poor Jude. He doesn't even stand a chance. Um, and Yuri. The Knight, I think, I think the mercenary guy's name was Lionheart. He got introduced really late in the show, and I was like, what the fuck are we doing here? Um, I think you should watch the first season if you like that kind of like romance show that has some fantasy elements, but it's mostly about like a lady fucking making the best of it. It's good. Um, the Vexions of a Shut-In Vampire Princess. Uh, I have not enjoyed the manga of this, so I probably won't watch his anime. Uh, a neat vampire who is weak because she does not want to drink human blood gets kind of dumped in to become in charge of a, uh, a platoon in the army of a bunch of uh, degenerates. And she's got to make use of it and make the best of it. And it's fine. Um, we got this dude playing. Uh, yeah, this is VR MMO anime. Uh, he's just weird. It's, it's, it's like, you took all the cute out of Boofery and you get this. He's just a guy playing a, a game weird. Um, eh, I'm not I'm not into it. Tokyo Revengers, uh, Chenjiku Hen. Uh, this most likely will be on Hulu and Disney Plus. So uh, eventually I will get Hulu for a month. At the end of the fall season, I will watch this and I will watch bleach the bleach that i have missed so far because i don't want to pay for hulu uh uh you know to watch this weekly uh so eventually i'll get hulu and get caught up on it uh more pretty derby uma uh, musume more pretty i don't really like pretty derby uh, horse girls undead unlock also is going to be a hulu show this could theoretically this show could theoretically also come to crunchyroll it might not be a Hulu exclusive. I have not read this manga, but I know people that really like this manga about a girl who has a mis, uh, like huge misfortunes and the guy that can't die that wants her, that she, basically she wants to die. But then also, basically he's like, you're perfect. For me to act like you'll be so unlucky one day that I'll actually die. Um, uh, and it, it seems fun. I haven't read this, but it seems fun. And if it's only on Hulu, I'll watch it at the end of the season. But it, it's fun. David Production, good studio. Uh, Under Ninja just doesn't seem appealing to me at all there's just not anything that's too striking about um under ninja it's just like a ninja has to go to school or something mm. and then the last one is yuzuki uh san chiyo kodai uh which is uh a slice of life about four brothers living together Mm. 
I don't, there's nothing, nothing there. I don't know. Uh, and then we got some shorts, which we probably won't get because it's rare that we get shorts. Here's one short that I hope we get. Rail Romanesque 2, the sequel to Rail Romanesque, a show that for whatever reason, remember pre-merger, how occasionally there'd be a show that was on like Funimation and Crunchyroll, and they were the biggest shows, like the big shows, like it'd be like My Hero Academia is going to be on both, or oh, well, you know, Attack on Titans on both, like they negotiated, they got to be on everything, because everyone wants to watch these big giant tent poles. Now, One Piece is on both. Rail Romanesque was on both. It's a shorts where the episodes are like 10 minutes at most. Uh, or less than 10 minutes. I think it's like four, five minutes. Um, it's a series about young girls who are also AI trains. They're like, they're rep they each girl represents a different train line in Japan. And they all have personalities that are related to the areas that those trains go in, like the like stereotypes of that area. And there's like a Chinese train. And then it's also very gay. It's like all, it's all subtext. Like every moment of it is just like girls meeting each other and like different, like there's like a drama, like a, a one, like one gung ho and the other one, like, like friendships are born and like people like help each other out. And the whole thing was, it was like a conference. The season one was a conference where they all got together to figure out ways to like help train lines in Japan. It's terrible. I loved it. I don't know if Crunchyroll is going to pick this up. I don't know why Crunchyroll and Funimation both had it last, uh, last time. It's weird. And I'm not, I'm not a, it's, it's a vehicle, but a girl. That's not my style. I don't watch the, uh, the warships or the war plane ones, but they're girls. But I don't know. I don't, I watch Real Romanesque and it, it's, it, they're shorts. And I hope, I hope we get to see it. Uh, Dark Gathering continues. Hulk continues. I'm going to watch Hulk. Uh, that one did not come over here. It's a bunch of shorts. Uh, just Kaisen continues to watch that. I'm not watching that. And di didn't know this was continuing. Okay. Uh, then movies. Gitama of Theater 2D, which is the theatrical cut of... So they just took some episodes of the anime and added some extra footage and made it a movie. I love you, Gintama. You... Do not give a shit about anything. You are just going to... Uh, there's always going to be more Gintama. And I don't... I, I respect it. Uh, uh, the fourth film in the six-part series of the Girls und Panzer series. Um, uh, that looks kind of cool. What the fuck is this? This is a movie about a concierge... Uh, a fantasy movie about a concierge. That sounds cool as fuck. Somebody getting this? I don't know if anyone will get this. This seems cool as hell. IG's making a... That's a cool idea for a movie. Kind of the Great Snow Sea. Uh, uh, Gigi no, uh, Zo, yeah, Kitaro. Talk about the other version of Kitaro. Uh, Komada, the whisk, a whiskey family. That seems neat. A lot of these movies we'll never see, but some of them get licensed. Um, we got a special here uh, for uh, My Life is a Villainous, All Re Roots Lead to Doom, X, which was the second one. This is a special spinoff movie, um, which I believe is canon. I believe this movie is uh, parts of the manga. It's a continuation of the second season, and that's cool. Uh, I'm glad they got a movie. Uh, Precure gets a movie. Uh, Rascal Does Not Dream of Sister gets a movie. Or Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl stuff. Spy Family Code White. It's a movie. It's a Spy Family movie. That's going to be fun. I hope that I hope that is easily watched on Crunchyroll in the future. Um, 
that. It looked cute. Probably won't see that. All right, now we got the specials, which is also this is also going to include one-offs, uh, OVAs, bonus stuff to Blu-rays, and of course Netflix series get dumped in here. Things that appear all at once, or like I guess Amazon uh, Prime Japan sometimes gets dumped here too. Uh, okay, well we have to say this. Attack on Titan final season, the final chapter, special two. The second half of the last part of the final season of Attack on Titan, concluding the ending arc story of Aaron and the others. Just let that sink in. The second half of the last part of the final season of Attack on Titan, November 5th, it finally ends. The final chapters special two comes out. Theoretically, this is the end of Attack on Titan. Theoretically. Uh, Baki Hanma. I love that. I love that there's been so many Baki series that have come out. Uh, both Baki and, and Baki son, like so many series have come out and they're all canon and they're all like adaptations that continue and le where the other ones left off. It's awesome. They're, it's not for me, but it's awesome. Uh, good night world. Ooh. I don't know about that. Uh, Gundam build metaverse. Gundam build is 10 years old. So they're doing a three episode thing. Um, and it's kind of me meshing together Gundam build fighters and Gundam build divers somewhat. Uh, and it's looking at different characters. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of fan service for build fighters or build and also fan service for people that just like Gundam shit. Uh, and I think... It'll just be on their website. My guess is it'll just be on the Gundam like YouTube. Uh, more Dropkick is coming out uh, because of crowdfunding. So another episode comes out. Uh, Dropkick, my, my devil, is like a huge success story for crowdfunding. Like... I believe at least one, maybe two seasons exist solely because fans were like, we want more and we'll help you make more. And then they're getting another episode. That's awesome. I don't think it's particularly that good, but I love that it keeps getting to exist. Uh, Kenga Ashura. I did not watch the first season of that. So I'll probably watch the second. This is on Netflix. Uh, OVA with the, okay, this is OVA for the, uh, the manga, My Heroes, My Hero Academia, UA Battle Heroes. Uh, this is a OVA. Um, it's just it's just another OVA. The OVAs for My Hero Academia are fun, so that's cool. Knights with a Cat and Gamera Rebirth. This is just a promotion for Gamera, but it's a cat instead. That's cute. Um, Pluto is a Netflix series. Uh, I forget who wrote, who wrote, oh, somebody fucking famous wrote Pluto, right? Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Now I'm, now I'm remembering more about Pluto. Um, it is, uh. Uh, Nakui Urasawa. Urasawa wrote this one. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. And then he, he had some help as well. But okay, yes. All right, great. I was like, I definitely know who this is. But I was like, I couldn't remember. Uh, this is not something that I'll probably watch. Like, I don't have Netflix right now. I don't necessarily expect to get Netflix uh, in, in the, the near future. Um but yeah, I mean, the dude made a bunch of stuff. I think Happy is something that I really loved. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking at his work to see if there's like other stuff that like people like. I know people really liked Pineapple Army. Um, uh, yeah, he's just done a lot of. He's done a lot of manga. Uh, 
Okay, I knew the name uh, was familiar. I just had to look it up. My apologies for that. But yeah, I'm probably not going to watch this, but it's cool that it's coming out. Uh, Pokemon Concierge, the, the second Concierge uh, movie or anime. Uh, this is uh, a this is another like weird Pokemon show that's out this year because there's also uh, uh, Pedal to Winds. Just a lot of just little Pokemon stuff that comes out now. Princess Principal, Crown Handler, Chapters 3, Cost for Custom Cars. What a good title. And then, uh, let's see. So this is part of the 10th anniversary of the uh, of uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Uh, it's included in bonus booklets for the second season, Blu-ray. And it's going to be... So, so basically, a novel came out if you bought the Blu-rays. And then they're going to make a three-episode anime based on that novel um and it's just i think it's just more side story i don't think it's canon oh wait it's a sequel so maybe it is canon so i think this takes place in between the first and okay so this takes place in between the first and second season and it is canon all right well then i i might watch that i don't know okay there we go yeah so it is a sequel that time i got reincarnated as a slime so it, is, it fits in between the first season and the second season. I mean, I'll watch it. I assume that Crunchy, Crunchyroll has put up every VOD for this show. So I'll probably watch it. And that's it. Uh, I'm going to do my outro here for this video. Uh, this video has been two hours long, making it almost to the longest Pat Bears Anime Club. Um, I will have a video in... Uh, two weeks from now uh, on my YouTube where I will be doing something related to this new season. It might be a check-in. It It's probably going to be me telling you about all of the Isekai that is out for this new season because I usually do that every season. So I'll probably do that too. And if I'm watching them or not, look forward to that in the comments below on the YouTube video. Let me know what you're excited about. What did you watch last season? What are you excited for for the new season? Uh, and you know, or ideas for future videos for the Pat Bears Anime Club. Love to hear it. Thanks for watching this very long video.